A former Miss Universe Kenya, Rachel Mbuki Marathi is no stranger to hard work and dedication. In 2007, she came to the U.S. to pursue her goals as an actress, TV host, and singer. Rachel is outspoken and stands up for what she believes in. She's our gold digger. Hi, my name is Rachel Mbuki Marete. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I am fine, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to take this time out of your busy schedule to be on our series, Goal, G-O-A-L, Digger. <laughs> Thank you. We use it in a positive sense because we need to empower and highlight and show others around the world, other women, that those are out there finding their dreams and going after it. So tell me about your beginning in the sense of not just from the start, not from the start, however, from what, what inspired you to this um, run for this universe for Kenya? I was very young. I was 18 years old. I was in my first year in college and well at university. And um, that year they were doing the Miss Kenya pageant really big, the Miss Universe Kenya. And they had a huge prize on it. I believe at the time it was equivalent to around $15,000. That was a lot of money to a young girl. And they were going all around the country auditioning. and. I was tall and I was really skinny. So everybody in my class kept telling me, go for it, Rachel, go for it, you can do it. And at the time I thought, you know, like models and pageant girls, they're all like, I don't know. I had a really bad view on them. I thought they were all kind of just dumb and I didn't like what they represented. And I, and I just wanted to be a career girl. And I was like, no. And then this one girl that actually, we were kind of, um, we were kind of rivals, I would say. We just did not like each other. Everybody knew that. But one day she stops me on the hallways at the university and she's like, so, are you going to be going for the pageant? Are you going to audition? And I'm like, no, it's none of your business anyway because we didn't like each other. And then she told me, she's like, listen, one day you're going to be old. You're going to be in your 70s, <laughs> she said. Because uh, at the time we we're 18, so we're thinking we'll die by 70. You know what I mean? Now in my, in my 30s, I'm like, I think I'm willing to go till late eighties at least. Anyway, so she's like, when you're in your seventies and you're on your deathbed and you're looking back on your life, you're going to remember all the things that you could have done, but didn't do. And you're going to regret it. Do you want to have regrets when you're old and dying that you are able to do something and you did it? And I was like, whoa, you know, she caught me off guard with that. And remember, this is a girl that I didn't like. We just, I think we just did not like each other. And I, I was just like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. And that stuck with me. And it's actually stuck with me throughout everything I've done in life. And so I went to audition and they auditioned over a thousand girls in the country. And I guess it was just meant to be because I kept going from stage to stage to stage until finally I won. And all because this girl who I thought didn't like me and I didn't like her actually stopped me and said some really wise words to me. And literally to be honest with you that is why i got into that pageant and i'm really grateful that i did so impactful thanks for sharing that story but just like anyone else i'm sure you've had some disruptions in your career yeah what can you share that with us disruptions well see when i think of my career i always think of it in two different ways i mean i'm a tv host that's what i love to do and then I'm also um, in the corporate world as a medical sales rep. So as an immigrant, I've always felt I cannot just, I mean, my number one thing that I would love to do is TV hosting, but you know, you, here in LA, everybody's trying to be something in the media industry. So as an immigrant, I think we feel an extra pressure uh, to be okay, to make something of ourselves. So I'm like, okay, it's well and good, but I cannot just pursue that. I have to, you know, I can't put all my eggs in that basket. So I have to pursue a different career using my education. And I've been able to be, you know, I'm grateful, very successful in my 
um, career in medical sales. So I think while it's been a blessing, the obstacle has been just kind of juggling two different things. I tried to find a career outside of media that I felt was well suited to my personality. And as a TV host, I'm someone who's great at presenting and I'm a talker. So sales was perfect for me. And um, so the obstacle is just kind of feeling like I have to juggle two careers, but at the same time, um, I'm really grateful for it because both of them helped me grow in different ways. But when it comes to just what has been my obstacle moving forward, I would say it's more of a people thing and learning how to navigate the workforce in America as a black woman, because that is a whole different set of skills that every black woman needs to learn, especially if you come here as an immigrant. And whenever I've missed out on opportunities or I've had to uh, quit a job or something, it's always been because of little nuances between uh, you know you and the people you work with. And as a black woman, it's it's a very it's a very straight line to walk. And so, yeah, my obstacle has been just learning how to navigate that whole dynamic, I think. Wow. But you get better with time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what is your greatest achievement? What would you say? What's that? Hmm. Um, I wouldn't say it's just one thing. I think my greatest, my greatest achievement is just being where I'm at today, just overall. Uh, given my journey, you know, born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya, just, you know, a little African girl with big dreams. And to be where I'm right now, saying that I live in Beverly Hills, something that we used to see on TV, something that I only dreamed about, and to just be proud of the achievements I've made as far as my career, because I'm a very career-driven person. I think that's my biggest achievement, just being able to um, um, be empowered by where I'm from and to be in the position that I'm at, especially trying to also impact other lives. So I know that's not a very streamlined answer, but I'm just proud of myself overall. And it's something I've had to learn how to do, to be proud of myself. And Yes, and that would be a very inspirational message to women and young girls looking up to you. You know, be proud of who you are. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So, you know, part of being a woman, we get criticized. Mm. We get criticized. We are sometimes thrown under the bus. Yeah. How do you get over that criticism? Ooh, well, again, I'm going to go back to the black woman experience. I feel whatever obstacles are there for womanhood in general are always magnified when it comes to a woman of color, especially a black woman. Even in our own culture, you know, I come from a very patriarchal culture. So misogyny tends to be a big obstacle for women overall. So ever from the moment you're born as a woman in my culture, a black woman anywhere in the world, I feel like odds are stacked against you. People are very quick to police us in every little thing that we do. The way we wear our hair, the way we carry ourselves, oh, if you gain some weight, if you lose some weight, if you express your disdain about something, um, you have to be so careful how you express it, especially in the workplace, because you don't want to be stereotyped as an angry black woman. And then also, when you get to a point as a black woman where you start to um, experience success, you know, all your congregate efforts are coming together and you're seeing the fruits of your labor, then what you start facing, especially as a black woman, if you carry yourself in a certain way and people look at you and see, you know, she's living a bit of a luxurious lifestyle, she seems to be doing well, I feel like there's an instinct to want to tear you down, put black women in their place, take you off that pedestal it's a thing you know and it doesn't just come from non-black people it actually a lot of it also comes from fellow black people a lot of it comes from my fellow countrymen and women there's just this instinct to take a black woman down get her off her high horse we just i don't know why it's like that but um to be a black woman is to understand the criticism will always be there and what i try to do is to try and really, first of all, gauge whether this is constructive criticism, that is something I need to take in that will help me grow, or if it's something that's made to tear me down. 
And then once I make that assumption, I deal accordingly. But at the end of the day, I feel like with everything that's thrown at us, if we handle it the right way, it, it betters us, even if it's unfair criticism. Um, how we overcome it betters us. And when you're on social media as well, there's also a bullying aspect, a social media bullying aspect that can easily happen to women of color who look like they have something going on and um, take it by stride. I don't think it ever stops for us, unfortunately. Yes, just keep moving, just keep smiling. Yes? <laughs> yes, and face it. Sometimes you, go, you have to face it um, head on and you have to address it and get rid of the fear of oh if i address it i'm not going to look like a lady because you know they're going to call me an angry black woman but you just every situation is different but i think as long as you and that's i think the best thing that i've learned as far as handling the criticism is self-care and self-love because the more you take care of yourself and learn to love yourself the more you'll be able to navigate situations like those and be able to differentiate um, when it's constructive criticism, when it's not, when it's something to learn or learn from, and also just learn how to um, get past it and not lose yourself. Thank you. And my last question yes. for you. Can you give a word of encouragement to women? Right. Well, I think my word of encouragement and would be, and this is something that I'm applying in my life, it's something that I'm constantly working on in the last few years, especially is what I just said. Self-care and self-love is the most important thing a woman can possess. When you love yourself, when you take care of yourself, you respect yourself. And once you respect yourself, you then set the tone for how people in your life are going to treat you because you'll have things that you can accept and things that you cannot. And then you set standards for yourself based off of that. But you cannot set the right standards if you do not value yourself. And I feel as women, again, especially as black women, we're not really taught to, to value ourselves, to place ourselves on a pedestal. So I have learned how to do things like, just the way I talk to myself, is that I used to be so critical of myself. I would be so hard on myself. No matter what I did, it never felt enough. I never felt enough. And also wanting that validation from people around me, my family, letting me, then until I realized, no, I have to be the one who validates myself. I am responsible for my own happiness. And so even the way I talk to myself, rather than be harsh on myself when I feel I've done something wrong, I forgive myself. I call myself names like darling, my love, you know, I pretend the voice in my head, the, 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 all the, the voice that we all have that talks to us, I pretend it's someone else and I pretend that it's a kind person who says kind things to me. And when I'm wrong, I say to myself things like, you're not perfect and that is fine. You made a mistake, you'll be just fine. Let's work through it instead of me beating myself, myself down. So women out there, self-care is so powerful. Self-love is everything for us. So let's work on it. Thank you, Rachel. Self-care, self-love, beautiful words, right? And thank you for being a part of Goal. Thank Dig. you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. All right. Until next time. Bye-bye.